Welcome to Buckle Up. I'm Harry King and this is a Mercedes-Benz C-Class Estate. But don't turn off the video yet. It's not as boring as you think. This is actually the most elite car we've ever had on this channel because it's a petrol, it's a manual, and it's a wagon. Suck on that algorithm. So we'll start our walk around here at the front where you can see there's um, a, one big star, two big stars, and then you might not be able to see this uh, that clearly, but there's actually uh, two more stars in both of the headlights. That's four Mercedes badges just on the front of the vehicle, just so everybody knows that you're richer than they are. Otherwise, it's fairly standard. There's some grills. These ones at the side aren't real and it's silver like a like an f1 car from the 50s that's mercedes like to bank on that this silver arrows thing and now the cars are yeah come on here on the side um there's not a huge amount to say uh, there's a chrome strip here but a black detail here so that's slightly mismatched and some nice healthy big tires which is good if you're going to drive it on a a field but why would you do that with a rear wheel drive estate car? And also you'll notice quite large disc brakes for something with only 181 PS, but we'll, uh, we'll come around to why they're helpful in a second. Here at the back, we have a continuation of that chrome waistline that we had at the side. Another three pointed star, though this one is slightly less obnoxious than the one on the front. And the designation of the car, it's a C200, which means it has a two litre petrol engine. I'm going to open the boot though to show you my favourite feature of the back of this car. Uh, it's an automatic tailgate, so I'll just um, let it do its thing. And then you'll see up here there's a little silver button. If I pull that, the uh, car gets an erection. And there you have a deployable tow ball. So. Your big brakes might come in handy if you're towing something, is my thought, at least. I don't know if that's scientifically correct. I just feel like bigger brakes stop, bigger things better. Maths. So since we're here, we're going to move on to the inside. Um, it's an estate, as you can see. So nice, big, open boot. Boot features. There is a 12-volt socket back here. Um, a little side bit with um, elastic where you've got your first aid kit and your wheel lug nut set. There is underfloor storage, but under here you will not find a spare wheel. You'll find your, your, your usual tire goob stuff. But you'll also find, more importantly, the Mercedes box. Ugh. Oh, that didn't work. There we go. Look at that. It's a, it's a, you put um, wine, but then you can stick that in your, and look, it fits. And it also, it lives in its own nice little space in the boot with um, a little edge protector so it doesn't rattle while you're driving around. This car also comes fitted with a dog guard, um, which I'm now going to try and put in place. Oh God, the ceiling's quite low. Oh, I can't even, look, I can't get my shoulders in. Um, so it just needs to, oh God. It just needs to get up. <sighs> I think, I think I might have to go and do it from that side. <laughs> Obviously, at this point, all your dogs have run off and been run over on the motorway. Um, no, at least that'll save you the trouble of putting this up. Oh my God, why is he so stiff? Go in. Is that, no? How does this work? There, yeah. And just like, just, and just like that. Um, now your dogs can't slobber on your seats. Anyway, with uh, with all that done, shall we? We'll we'll move we'll move around to the back seats. So you join me in the back seats of the C class, and it's a fairly Spartan space for what is supposed to be a luxury vehicle. There is no electronic ports down here, or even aircon vents. Um, there's a solitary control on the doors, which is the electric windows. There are decent door bins. They are felt lined for luxury, and then you have these uh, classic airplane style seat back pockets you you might have a nice time in the back of a ford mondeo 
if you're a kid. It's not not really designed for the back seat passengers, this car, I don't think. But speaking of who this car is designed for, let's move through to the front. So now moving to the front, it's immediately uh, a, a more luxurious location than the back seats. There's obviously a lot more going on here. We'll start with the steering wheel. Now, this car's a slightly odd spec. It's for sale, as I said in the start of the video, but it's a petrol manual estate, which is a, it's a weird spec that no one really ordered. There's, I think, five for sale currently in the entire country. So it's sort of a base spec, but then it's been ordered specifically because the, the owner wanted a manual petrol. So they had to settle for this, which is a rubberized steering wheel and the smallest infotainment display and there's not a navigation sd card so all of these fancy controls um don't actually do that much i'm sure you could probably go and pay mercedes some large sum of money to get the navigation sd card installed in this car but otherwise yeah this kind of is here and looks nice but isn't that helpful um behind the steering wheel it's a slight oddity is there's no stalk on the right hand side in a mercedes-benz that would usually be the gear shift but obviously in this it's a manual so there's just nothing there there's just stalks on the left hand side then you've got some more controls on the front of the steering wheel and a horn obviously you have the uh the classic three vent look underneath your infotainment display it's a seven inch by the way and um they're quite nice quite premium got little little twisty dials on the front remind me of an amplifier uh, and then your HVAC controls under that and your CD player. Then you've got some more of the CD controls down here. This is your power on for your infotainment and your volume. And it's a bit, if you were driving, it's a bit out of the way. But you can probably use one of these buttons on the steering wheel to do your volume instead. That's probably what I would do as a driver. Uh, you do have a central cubby space here, which I've put the key in. But you do actually have to put the key in this car to start it. So, um you can't just leave the key there there's a 12 volt socket though but there's not enough space in there for a phone you have a decent sized glove box although i find the opening a bit weird you sort of top load it i'd rather have one that you open the front of uh, you have this center console here with the bi folding doors that's a fairly decent size and there's an elastic strap in there if you want to keep papers in it then uh decent door bins cup holder cutouts in the door bins as well and uh some nice vanity mirrors the seats themselves are quite nice they're made of leather and they're perforated in the middle so they look like a sort of men's wash bag they've got these um adjustable leg bits that are quite heavily sp sprung um and then they're manually adjusted front to back but then all the other controls are electric um which just means they're inconveniently heavy to move manually. I think that's everything. Shall we go for a drive? So, driving a manual Mercedes-Benz C-Class. It's definitely the last of the breed, the modern current one, or the next one, they don't have manual options. This is it. This is the latest manual C-Class you could get. And I think it's a shame. It's a nice manual. It's a nice gear shift. Now, the pedal spread is a little odd. I think BMWs do this as well, as does the Mazda MX-5. So what kind of happens is the clutch and the brake end up split over the centre. So they're... Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to explain this well. So there's like the clutch and the brake, imagine, are perfectly symmetrical. And then past that, there's the accelerator to the right and the dead pedal to the left. So if you're... Just working with the accelerator and the clutch, you feel like your feet are slewed over to the right-hand side. But the majority of the time you're driving, as long as you don't mind having your feet quite far apart, with one on the dead pedal and one on the accelerator, they're actually equally distanced and you're sitting comfortably um, facing forwards. It's only when you're working a lot with the clutch and the throttle that you'll, uh, you'll feel slightly diagonal, if that makes sense. Um, the shift itself was good. I mean, it's not amazing but it was like it, it wasn't as tight as anything but it, it wasn't loose either you you knew where you were you knew where you were moving to it all felt solid and well put together and like it was connected to the car it wasn't vague in any way it wasn't sporty either it was quite a long throw but it's not a sporty vehicle as i shall now move on to it very much has the little engine that could that little two liter petrol unit putting out just a bit under 200 horsepower it's eager it revs but it's a big heavy car and it's not getting it anywhere quickly. It 
on paper, it's supposedly relatively fast, but in the real world, it didn't feel significantly faster than my Jag, which is nearly 9 seconds to 60. It's supposed to be just over 7 seconds to 60. I don't know if that's... Maybe it's because the Mercedes is more cosseting, and you can't tell what's going on outside so well, but it just doesn't feel as fast as those numbers suggest it will be. And also, slightly weirdly, on the accelerator, when you put your foot all the way to the floor, the last little bit of travel... You have to push this like secondary switch, but I don't I don't know why it's got that other than maybe as a fuel saving measure so you can put your foot down without putting your foot all the way down if that makes sense. But I just feel like I'm driving. I want to be driving. Don't put things in the way. I've bought a manual. Let me drive the car. It's obvious that what I want to do is drive. Eh. But it's, you know, also, it's it's easy to overcome and I'm sure you'd get used to it. Everything else is obviously, it's a Mercedes, so... Everything feels incredibly solid. I know people go on about perceived quality. Mercedes are maybe the kings of that perceived quality. The seats are certainly very comfortable. All the visibility was great, but it's an estate car. It's quite hard to make an estate car bad visibility, and if you do, then you deserve to be marched through the streets with women ringing bells shouting shame behind you. But no, this this was good, so we don't need to do that. It was very sensitive to the drive mode selection, so when we started, it starts in comfort. And while I was getting fuel, Rob flicked it into eco, but then once it was flicked into sport, the car just felt so much better, um, and it didn't have adaptive dampers. I should state that now. It didn't have adaptive dampers, and it had small wheels on it, so it has just steel springs, small wheels, and it's set up for comfort. So... Flicking this car into sport just changes the steering and the throttle response. And honestly, if you come across a car with that combination of things, I don't know why you would ever not drive it in sport, because in sport it felt great. It felt like a driver's car almost. Not almost. It felt like a driver's car. The, the steering was good and communicative. The throttle was eager, even though it's maybe a bit under-engined. But the engine is eager as well. And the fact you're so busy and then you've got the gear shift and that really helps and it just makes the car feel really engaging and the low power means you're not actually going to get in that much trouble because you're never going to push it you know stupid far you're never going to get into a like danger danger zone so on a back road it's quite good fun it's fairly chuckable the chassis is solid it, i'm sure it's incredibly rigid again well built Mercedes bank vault and yeah with the small wheels and the squishy suspension you kind of let it lean in a corner and it feels like you're hanging on but I'm sure you've actually got you could go way faster and the car wouldn't be upset but you feel like you're really pushing it and and the steering yeah it's just but then in comfort it felt completely <laughs> like in comfort it it could have been anything it could have been any car it could have been front wheel drive there was nothing there but if you put it in sport then it feels good that I don't know if Probably if you also had adaptive dampers, in sport it would just get way too stiff. I think this is a perfect golden place where you have comfort, squidgy suspension, but eager throttle and good steering. And and yeah, that just felt really great. And the brakes were good as well, and the clutch is good, and the shift is long, but um, exact. And you felt like it, it was a car you could hustle. Now, obviously, if you're going to put dogs in the back of it, please, please don't hustle a car around on an A-road. Um... Only do your hustling when the dogs aren't in the boot. Please, please, please. Because obviously the other part of this car is ideal for dogs. It even came with the net. Uh, it's clearly, you know, it's that's part of this car's MO. But when you're in it by yourself, if you, you know, can only have one car, for example, and you like driving, you like manuals, this is quite a good compromise. Because yes, you could get one of the... Well, I say you could. Obviously, it's uh, budget required. But a lot of people talk about the RS Avance and the AMG Estates as being these brilliant hybrids of an, like a practical family car and a sports car. But they're all automatic. And if, if what you care about in driving is engagement, this is a very engaging car, a fun car that still does all the family stuff. So I, I think if if what you're interested in is actual engagement and driving joy... This is a better choice than something faster with an automatic. Um, that might be a hot take and lots of people might disagree with me, but I think it's way better to drive this in terms of driving pleasure and smiles per gallon. God, I use that phrase too much. This is better to drive than something that's just like a, a cruise missile that you don't have to think about. 
if that's what you want, then go and do that. I'm not here to tell you that's wrong. I'm just saying if what you're looking for is an engaging drive that then you can also put a dog in the boot of or whatever, this is up there. I'd, I'd say other than this, you're looking at like the bigger hot hatchbacks where the boot would be maybe big enough and you could still get a manual or something like a Ford ST or a Honda Civic Type R. Um, I think you'd be able to fit a dog in one of those boots. A small dog, at least. But definitely, I think in terms of manual wagons, I can't even think of another one. They're certainly they're, they're pretty they're pretty thin on the ground now, but this is a good one. So, if you happen upon one that you uh, and you've been looking for this sort of thing, I definitely recommend this. Though, as I pointed out earlier, there's only five for sale at the time of filming. There was only five for sale. This one has actually already sold. So, um, I was gonna say, you know. Follow the link, you can find this car for sale. It sold about four days after we filmed the video. It, Yeah. <laughs> so clearly people are looking for these because they're rare and they're special. And I think, yeah, if you can find one with a spec like that, it's it's an absolute steal. Because this car sold for around 10 grand. I can't think of many cars for 10 grand that's so versatile and yet still so fun. Well done, Mercedes-Benz. So, the Mercedes-Benz C-Class Estate. Petrol with the manual. Car names are too long. It's a good, luxurious car. The ride is sublime. The interior is fine. Everything is just as it should be. It's very Mercedes, very well engineered. But with the manual and a slightly peppy petrol engine, um, you can also kick it up a gear. And it's actually um, a fairly decent car to drive on the ragged edge. Um, you can actually have a bit of fun in it if you want to. But the rest of the time it's very adult, very mature, very sober, very sensible. It's, uh, I, I can't, I can't think of anyone I, I, I wouldn't recommend this car to. But I do like manual estate cars. That should be noted. I think they're just, the. it's, come on guys, don't buy an SUV, buy this manual, manual estate car. The link, the link's in the description. Buy this one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe. Comment down below if you have anything to say about what I've said about the car, or just to say about the car, or just to say, I'll read it, I promise. Um, we have lots of social media. All of those links are in the description, but, you know, to pick a few, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, a couple of other ones as well. Really, just go wild. And we have a Patreon if you'd like to give us some money. Um, but an even better way to give us money, because you'll get even more in return, we have merchandise. You can find our spread shop in the description as well. So many things to do in the description. I bet you're going to spend the next 10 to 15 minutes there. Please do. Okay, bye now.